Hi everyone, it's Hannah or Lamancy and welcome back to another doll customization video. Yeah, another one. This is like fourth week in a row. I'm on a roll, but there won't be one next week. But there will be one after that, so yeah. Today I'm going to show you how I made Sapphire from Steven Universe. I'm also going to make Ruby sometime soon because they need to be together. They can't be alone, okay? She needs her ruby. It took me a while to complete Sapphire, about a month, because she just kept giving me problems. I had to redo the dress like eight times, and her hair twice, and her face twice, and yeah. But don't give up, people. I did it. I did it. She turned out okay. Alright, that's about all I have to say in this intro, so let's move on to voiceover, Hannah. For this doll, I'm going to combine two different dolls, an Iris Clop's head and a Madeline Hatter body. I don't really like the elongated torsos of the Monster High bodies, and also Madeline Hatter is one of the shorter dolls, which is why I'm switching. I already cut the hair off the Iris Clop's doll, and now I need to take the head off to pull it all out. I let the doll soak in hot water for about 10 minutes to make it easier to remove the head from the neck peg. This also makes the head more flexible, so it's easier to pull out the hair. I use tweezers to scrape the inside of the head and pull out the hair until she is completely bald. Then I removed the factory paint using acetone nail polish remover. I sprayed the doll with white plastic primer and then once it dried, went over it with acrylic paint. I put my list of materials in the description if you want to check it out. Now for the face up. I loved working with a doll with only one eye because I didn't have to worry about making everything symmetrical, which can be really difficult. So this was pretty easy. <laughs> anyway, I used Mr. Super Clear to prep the face for the watercolor pencils, and once it dried, I got to work. It's important to seal the face between each layer of color to not only keep everything in place, but add more vibrancy and dimension. When I first started doll customizing, I made the mistake of not sealing it enough, and it looked so flat, and sometimes the color would chip off the face, and I would have to start all over. So if you're thinking about doll customizing, definitely get a sealant. I didn't add eyelashes to the face because I thought I was going to add false lashes, but when I put them on later, I realized it looked really weird. It looked like that meme of Mike Wazowski with makeup on, so I was staring at my doll when it was all finished, and I was like, what is wrong with this? And I ended up just ripping the eyelash off and going back and drawing them on myself. And I think it turned out much better. After I was done with the watercolor pencils, I added a light blue blush to the face using soft pastels. Then I used gloss varnish to make the eyes and lips shiny. You can see I put too much gloss and had to soak some of it up with a paper towel. Oops. I also realized after I had already added the gloss that I forgot to add the white reflections of the eyes. Oops, again. Okay, on to the hair. I used this light blue acrylic yarn and cut strands to the length that I wanted. Then I unraveled each strand into its three parts. I originally made hair whips out of this, but I did not like how it turned out at all. It just looked really flat and thin, so I ripped off the hair and decided to reroot it instead. I also kept the natural waviness of the yarn instead of straightening it so it's more poofy. The rerouting tool that I'm using is something I made myself using an X-Acto knife base and a cut needle. I just put the yarn on my finger and then put it between the prongs of the needle, and then I just push it into the holes on the head. It's a bit more work than making hair wefts, but I like how it turned out.
I lightly brushed the hair out with the pet brush. Then I squeezed fabric glue into the head to try and keep it all in place. Now on to the clothes. I will link the patterns in the description. I cut out one bodice insert and two puff sleeves out of white fabric, two bodice pieces and two overskirts out of light blue, and one skirt out of a darker blue. I hemmed the bodice pieces as well as the top of the white insert. I think that's what I should call it. It goes in between the two bodice pieces. Then I pinned them together and sewed. For the sleeves, I sewed a basting stitch at the bottom so I can pull the thread and create ruffles. I was having trouble with cuffs, so I ended up just folding the bottom and gluing it down. Then I did another basting stitch at the top and created ruffles there. I hand stitched the sleeves to the bodice to keep it in place when I sew it on the sewing machine. Then I sewed the sides of the bodice. Then I hemmed these little skirts that go over the main skirt. I know this isn't the exact color Sapphire wears, but I had to order online due to the shelter in place order and sometimes the color doesn't look like the picture. Next I hemmed the bottom of the main skirt. Then I placed the two shorter skirts on top and sewed a basting stitch across. I pulled the thread to create ruffles. I sewed the bodice to the skirt and then up the back of the skirt, leaving space at the top for the Velcro. Finally, I cut these strips out of dark blue fabric and used fray block to keep it from fraying and falling apart. Once it dried, I glued it to the dress using fabric glue. Here is the dress all complete. Now her gem. I used this little round gem embellishment and colored it blue with marker. Then I hot glued it to her right palm. And that's it! Sapphire is done! Here are some pictures to show her completed look. And you can see the eyelashes I drew on here. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like and a comment and subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time. Bye!